Welcome to Allow Me to Be Frank. Here we go again. As the Mets' disastrous Hindenburg-like offseason continues. Well, Frank, we'll get into the Hindenburg Mets in a second. But uh, right now, I believe you have a special announcement that this is the first official podcast in your new place. That it is. As you can see, uh, I got, uh, I'm starting to get things set up. We could do a little 360. I don't, I threw out my desk. I had to get a new desk eventually. I mean, I'm doing the best I can trying to get everything set up and put together. This place looks great, especially with the TV set up and you got the stuffed turkey on the window in time for Thanksgiving, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get things set up. It's, it's, it's just taking a lot longer than I expected. It's just, it's, it's very difficult. What day did you officially move in? Monday. Monday, and how does it feel to be out of that hellhole? It's nice. It's 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 this is definitely a nicer place. What was the exit like from the old place? Uh, I still have to bring my keys back over. I put in for my mail uh, to be forwarded, and that's still not happening because the United States Postal they got rid of the service because there is no service in the United States Postal Service anymore. I mean, uh, they had. Uh, they're, 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 really, seriously, they have really gotten just at New Jersey transit like incompetence now with the uh, mail. Yeah, it's been really bad. I wonder how long it's going to take for you to start getting mail to the right address. Ugh, who knows? But I'm going to give it to at least uh, Friday. I'll drop off the keys, see if I have any uh, mail left behind. It, it, it's so much to do. It, this is This is a tough thing to move. Yeah, it is, and hopefully you won't have to do so again for a very long time. Well, I was 13 years at one spot. Mm, looks like this place might be built for longer than that. I actually uh, just saw a uh, picture of the place uh, from the air. Apparently, there are uh, solar panels on the roof. Really? Yes. You're in a state-of-the-art uh, unit, it seems. I mean, I got a dishwasher. It's uh, I'm washing dishes right now. I got uh, been washing laundry. Uh, I mean, as, as I put things away, I'm trying to clean off the bobbleheads and stuff. Frank, what's going on with the dishwasher? I saw you were having some trouble when you posted that picture recently. I never used a dishwasher before. So you put so, you put the pot in upside down. Yep. Or right side up, I should say, so that it filled yep. up with water. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, actually, I didn't. I I was going to, then I saw someone say, don't put the pot upside down, up, uh, turn the pot around, so I was able to turn that around. But I've had water collecting other things. Like what? Uh, like uh, crevices and corners of different things. One thing, and I saw people were saying, telling you to not put certain things in the dishwasher, but the one thing, when you're putting Tupperware in the dishwasher, make sure you put it in the top shelf, not the bottom. You're not supposed to put plastic in the, in the bottom. I washed a couple of items of Tupperware in the bottom. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that because it can they didn't come out. They didn't come out badly. Uh, well, I basically washed all my Tupperware. So it was just a couple of Tupperware that couldn't fit in the top shelf. What's it like finally having a dishwasher? What's it like finally having a washing, washer and dryer in your, in your apartment? Oh, it's nice. And they sing to me. They sing to me when they're done. They go, it's a match made in heaven, I guess. But uh, I'm... I'm uh, my god brother's coming up on Friday from California. Abe? Yep. Sweet. So he's What's gonna... uh, He's coming to spend Thanksgiving with you? Yep. That's great. So I'm not going to have this place completely ready and finished, but at least I'll have maybe another set of arms to help put me put things away. That's great. And is Abe going to sit in on our Thanksgiving special with Clem on Tuesday, next Tuesday? We can have him. We can bring him in. We can bring him in. There you go. Was there I any? I have. I, I'm gonna have to buy a new desk. I, I figure I could get one in Staples. 
I threw out one of my bureaus. Well, Frank, good thing Black Friday is coming. You could probably get a nice deal on a desk. Yep. Uh, I, I, I started putting my cards in, in bins. And and every time I bought, like, four bins, open it would be enough. So I bought the, the card, the, the bins for my binders, and I got four, and I only got half of them. So I had to go looking for bins, and I couldn't find the same bins. So I got bins that were not as quality at Staples. I got good quality bins the first time, not as quality bins the second time. And uh, then I still needed more bins. So uh, I tried to go to Walmart. The Walmart in Carney is a friggin' disaster. I've been there I don't before. Wanna, I don't want to hear any more about short staffing. This, the, the Carney Walmart, I, I, I can't go there anymore. I had to find another Walmart in New Jersey. What went on when you went there? Well, first off, uh, I had to get some keys made and things like that. But uh, I'm walking around to Walmart. It's just filthy. Uh, there's half-eaten food. Packages open all over the place. So then I go to the, uh, the storage container section, and they had no lids. The, the, the lids and the containers all were mismatched. Oh, my God. And to top it all off, they don't carry one bite pizza. Really? Yep. That's shocking. I mean, I mean, there, you, there, there, there's got to be better Walmarts in New Jersey than this one. Have you thought about maybe ordering some one bite pizza? Uh, if I see it at Walmart, I'll grab it. Right now, I can't even get to my oven right now. It's, it's, I still have. I, I'm finally clearing away a lot of the stuff. I got to put some of my uh, food away. I mean, uh, if you see over there, you got the pantries all open. I'm trying to get everything in there. I have, a, cabinets. I have another thing washing right now. Do you have a key card or is it a key itself? Uh, the key card does not work yet. Does not work yet. Okay. Um, now, what have you been doing for food? Have you? Uh, I imagine you haven't been cooking much in the past few days. Well... I did this today. White Castle. What sparked that decision? It was on Uber Eats. What'd you get? A uh, sack of 10 in fries. Sack of 10 burgers? Yep. I like the sack of chicken rings and obviously the fries. And they have pretty good milkshakes too, but they're... Yeah, I got, I got, I got one little uh, order of chicken rings, that, which are better. Yeah, I like uh, the, the one thing I, the one thing I gotta say about, uh, wh- uh, about uh, White Castle, is they have the absolute worst fries. You don't they're, like crinkle cut? I like crinkle cut, but they're just, they're not good. There's no like taste to it. Where was where is this White Castle located? Newark. In Newark, okay. I I've been to the one on Route 22 in Union a number of times in the past. They also stay open until like 3 a.m. Yeah, so is the one in Newark. Yeah, I'd imagine. It's it's not too far from the Belleville border. It's on uh on Broadway in Newark. What else has been going on with the um? I should say with the menu. What what else has been on the menu uh, since you've been moving? Uh, diners. I've been going to diners. Any Wendy's or BK or? Uh, I did go to Wendy's uh, the, after the movers left on Monday. Uh, I actually went into Wendy's to eat because the, the uh, drive through line, once again, was very long. And, of course, then I went inside. There was a long line. And. It's like there's only like two people actually working at the, at the it looks like at times. It's just, uh, I went to McDonald's one day when I was moving stuff and that automated ordering system is fucked at McDonald's. Yeah, I don't like the new ordering system at all. We got that in Hoboken now too. And the Hoboken McDonald's is terrible, Frank. You get so pissed going there. They're always out of everything. They were out of chicken, I think, the last time. Over the weekend on Saturday night, they were like out of, no, or they were out of burgers, something crazy like that. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago they were out of chicken McNuggets in uh, 
the McDonald's at Port St. Lucie and someone called 911. Oh my God. That is amazing. You know, I saw Port St. Lucie when I went down to Florida last week. How was it? It was all right. I walked around the stadium. What were you doing in Port St. Lucie? I thought you were in Miami. Well, I uh, landed in Jacksonville and drove down to Miami with Doug's and we drove through Port St. Lucie. So how far away is Port St. Lucie from Miami? Do you know? Maybe about 90 minutes. Okay, that's, that's not bad. That's good to know, actually, because I'm going to go down there for spring training in, uh, in February. It would be shorter if the traffic didn't suck. Oh, the traffic's terrible there. In Miami, people from Miami consider a long drive to be like 20 minutes. And everyone drives like an asshole there. People drive like assholes everywhere. Yeah, that's true. And then slow in the south. But then Florida, they're, or at least in Miami, they're extremely aggressive. Well, no one's worse than driving than Rhode Island. But you know a place that helps drive everyone and uh, something that could – a place for people to drive for and strive for is hot dogs. And America's first and original hot dog company is Feltman's Hot Dogs. Yes, Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. Feltman is now a veteran on business. And it was revived. It revived the, the recipe of the original Feltman hot dog in 2015. It was revived by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And they did it to honor their late brother Jimmy killed in the September 11th attacks. You know, with a team of military veterans that has collectively served over 110 months in combat, Feltman is now one of the largest, uh, fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% all natural. All beef hot dogs are available for purchase online at Feltman's.us and at Whole Foods. And not to mention, they ship super fast, and it'll be the perfect addition to your family's next cookout. Uh, I mean, uh, you're going to be running around on uh, Black Friday next week, so get that. And if you use promo code FRANK, you get 10% off all Feltman's products. That includes the bratwurst. That includes the bacon. That's Promo code FRANK for 10% off all items at Feltman's.us. And allow me to be frank is, once again, always presented by Feltman's. Yes, we are. And that reminds me, Frank. Uh, Feltman's, you could find them in a lot of Whole Foods and also Publix. And you were just down in Florida where Publix is the holy grail of grocery stores. Did you hit any Publix while you were down there? Uh, I hit Publix in the past. It's Didn't fantastic, right? Time. Yep. Yeah, I know. I love Publix. Went to a Bucky's. Is that like another grocery store chain? No, it's something weirder. Imagine, um, imagine Wawa on steroids. Okay. And where does the uh, performance enhancement come from? Uh, they got about a thousand gas pumps. Uh, it's like um, the sandwich ordering place. They're known for their brisket. They're from Texas. And they actually do it like a show there. The guy puts the brisket on the board. Fresh brisket on the board! Oh. Then he goes, uh, then he pulls, then he like cuts it up. Chopping up fresh brisket! Tossing up the brisket! So that was, you must have loved that experience. So they got that. They have they have like a, a wall that's like at least 50 feet long of soda fountains. Wow. They have like a general store in there. They have like a supermarket in there, a small supermarket, mind you. And, that, and it's, it's just like this, this like, like I said, it's Wawa on steroids. It's the originally in Texas. Now they're spreading throughout the South. What did you get there? Start with the soda, the soda fountain. Uh, orange cream soda. And what was your order? What food? Well, I, uh, it's coming up on an upcoming episode of uh, 
or dogging. Oh, there you go. So wait, did you get a you got so you got a hot dog there? Yes. Very nice, very nice. And and happy or what do you think? Mm, Satisfied? Well, well, you know, it's still a gas station hot dog. You didn't try the brisket while you were there? Or any of the biscuits? I oh, I tried brisket. Well, it's coming up in an upcoming episode. There you go. And and was this like Doug's place or something? It, was Doug's like, you got to try this? Uh, it's a place that's pretty getting pretty famous. It's growing throughout the South. And it's called Bucky's. And it's, uh, their mascot's a beaver. So they have a statue of a beaver outside here, too. Oh, that's and everyone cool. takes pictures of this beaver. Did you take one? Yep. I didn't see you post it. Did you not post it yet? Doug's posted it. Doug's posted it. Is Doug's back living in Jacksonville or is he moving up here? He's trying to move up here, but he still can't find any place. Yeah, when I saw him at the Mets game with you, he said Hoboken. Yeah, well, that every time he tries to get a place, he, it falls through somehow. Well, I'll tell you what, the, I would not, I'm fortunate that I, I'm not looking for an apartment uh, this year because the, all the rents have gone skyrocketed in Hoboken, New York, everywhere now that COVID's basically over. And um, yeah, it's not great because everyone's jacking up the rent. And luckily I got the COVID discount and uh, my landlords like us. So we're not having our rent raised, which is perfect. But everywhere else you try and look, it's the prices through the roof. Yeah. I'm paying a little bit more here, but it's worth it with all these amenities. Yeah, it looks worth and, it. And, and there's a uh, there, there's a weight room also. Uh, there's a uh, uh, what, do, what do we have? They have uh, they have a uh, barbecue outside. Uh, grills. They're not. I don't know if they're hooked up yet, but they're going to be up there. Now that you are in a complex that has a weight room and a gym, will, do you see yourself kind of getting back a little bit in the routine, maybe easing yourself into doing some, some working out here and there? I don't know how to lift weights. What about just like starting small, like doing, you know, working on the form? I don't know how to lift weights. The, last, the, the, the only time I've tried it, I pulled something in my, in my shoulder. Yeah, that's right, the rotator cuff. Frank, you also had a birthday. I believe. Yep. In between these last, from last episode to this one, uh, Saturday. Yes, Saturday. Saturday, and how'd you spend that? Moving and going to the Devils game. Very nice. So, was it the ideal birthday? What'd you get to eat? Uh. Well, they had a uh, pregame reception downstairs, so I had like a uh, a bagel. It was a prefix in the con since it was a day game. Um, I had a couple of cupcakes and then I went to uh Arlington Diner, had a hamburger. There you go. Did you spend it solo or were you with people? Or uh, my uncle helped me move a few things. Well, that's good. And how was the Devils game? They lost. I actually got invited to go to that game, I, I declined. Huh. The only reason I would have gone, well, for one, I mean, I'm not a big hockey fan, but going to hockey games, I've been to Devil games before. Or it's very fun to be there in person. Um, honestly, it might be like the best sport to watch in person, uh, and I'm sure you probably agree with that. But uh, the only reason was to see you on your birthday if I was going to go, but I wound up not uh, taking the offer. I, I, had, I had an inkling you were going to be there on your birthday. Yep, I would... Uh... I probably would not have gone yesterday it, it, with all the moving stuff I'm doing right now, trying to get things unpacked. And but the game ended up getting canceled because the senators have an outbreak. Oh my god! You know, one of the things I was talking about was uh, I was loading up all the baseball cards in the binders in the bins. And uh, after uh, I went to Walmart, I ended up getting uh, not so sturdy bins. And then I had to get uh, more bins on Saturday, and I got these bit. I got that. These are the bins I ended up going to at Target. Look how fucking flimsy these things are. Whoa, those are. It's like an elastic bin you got. So I put some binders on there. I tried to load them up, and I had an avalanche out of my closet of baseball cards. Certainly didn't make things easier. So no. once I'm done, un once I'm done unpacking 
all these fucking here they are Bella storage solutions bins. I mean, the, the, I mean, these bins should not do this shit. Oh my god, you didn't tr- test that in the store? <sighs> they were the only ones they fucking had. And after, and after going to Walmart and seeing bins not match. I was fucking stuck. (laughs) Well, how much were those bins? Like $15 a piece. Oh, that's a rip off and a half. Jesus. Talk about inflation. uh, So after that all broke down, I ended up buying more bins because I needed more bins at Dollar General. And those actually ended up being pretty damn good. There you go. That's you find the best stuff at, at like Dollar General and Five and Below. Very underrated stores. Uh, five and Below, boy, that thing is blowing up. I remember it used to be the only Five Below I used to know was a tiny Five Below at uh, Clifton Commons. Then they started adding them elsewhere, and then the, the uh, Five Below at Clifton Commons moved to another section. Well, moved from one end of Clifton Commons to another end of Clifton Commons taking over a space that was once held by, uh, talk about uh, Shift, uh, former uh, Pier 1. Oh, my God. What era was that? Pier 1? And Pier 1 and, and uh, the Five Below in Clifton Falls. Well, the Five 80s, Bo- 90s? No, this is now. Oh, this is now you're talking about. Yeah, because the Five Below has really uh, come a long way. Yeah, the uh, five below that was in Clifton Commons was a really tiny store. And now after uh, Pier 1 closed, it took over to Pier 1. There you go. Frank, how old did you turn on Saturday? 46? 46. 46. Do, do you feel 46? Uh, sp- uh, moving all this shit, I do. <laughs> so now you're, you're closer to 50 than you are 40 now. How does that feel? Ugh. And uh, by the time I'm 60, the Mets will probably uh, have one winning season. Probably, yeah. I mean, it hasn't been a good run since they won the last time in your last 35 years of existence. Um, Speaking of the Mets, we have news popping all week so far on them. Uh, Good, I guess, and bad, you could say. For you, probably mostly bad. You see who – you know they're going to hire Brad (laughs) Austin. Well, of course – First, they hired Billy Epler, and that deal is not official until it's finalized, but it's not official until probably tomorrow or Friday when they announce it. What are you waiting for? Meanwhile, all free agents are signing with people, and the message is just going, go, yep, bum, go, boop, 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 no, no, no. I didn't realize no one in the guard could sign elsewhere. Duh. <laughs> well, let's start with Syndergaard, I guess. Um, uh, for- but, uh, but before we go to Syndergaard, we have to remember that the holiday season's upon us. Yes, it is. And uh, I'm giving thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Do I tell my extended family that I have the Performance Package 4.0 from the global leaders of Below the waist grooming, not to mention it includes the lawnmower 4.0, trimmer to tame my bush, and score brownie points with the in laws. Get yourself manscaped for the man in your life, or get it for yourself. Get someone who needs it. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust manscaped with 20% off and free shipping with the code TANK by going to manscaped.com. Think of your holiday spread. Think of think of your holiday spread. Think of how good it will be. It is time to get thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Get 20% off with the code tank at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping. The code tank at manscaped.com. Be thankful this holiday season for the gift. Of all from coming from Manscaped, your balls will thank you. 
Yes, they will. And speaking of thank yous, Noah Syndergaard said thank you and goodbye to the Mets officially. He has signed a one-year $21 million deal with the Angels, shockingly turning down the Mets' $18.4 million qualifying offer after he said he would not leave New York and it was a tough pill to swallow and he wound up bolting, shockingly, during the beginning of the week. Well, you know, Syndergaard, uh, Syndergaard's already gone. And I hear every time a free agent uh, calls, uh, uh, the Met calls free agent, they, they actually laugh. They're, this is going to be an epic disaster of an offseason. There's something wrong, deep, deeply wrong with this team. Let's backtrack with Syndergaard. Um, he made it obvious that he didn't want to leave. And I think apparently what happened was the Angels GM, who actually helped draft him when he was in, the guy was in Toronto, he came cross country on Friday night, took Syndergaard out to dinner, wooed him with his data, their plan they had for him, stay healthy, improve his performance, build up his value. They run a six-man rotation, which helped Otani stay healthy last year for, across a full season, give him more rest, more recovery. And they offered him $21 million, which no team probably would have offered him. They were calling the Mets offer of the, of the QO way too high for him. And he realized there was other things out there. His camp clearly waited out the higher offer for him, and he took it, and he ran. Once Eduardo Rodriguez signed, but also what they were, the inkling they were getting was that the starting pitching market was going to be crazy, and it's already you know starting to pop as it is with Eduardo Rodriguez getting that big deal as well. And then Verlander said, and, uh, and then did you hear Andy Martino? Well, the Mets are lucky. They could get two pitchers for that price. Two pitchers for that price. Wait, Jared Eichhoff is a good quality arm. I'm mean, still, still, still the same. Still will pawn. See, Andy Martino is the brain. He is the voice of the Mets. He knows. <laughs> he knows. And he's going to say, he says, smile, Luke, <laughs> is fun. That's going to be next year's, uh, next year's uh, slogan. I hear you even coming out with a new Mets, uh, Mets song. Win, winning is bourgeoisie. Time to celebrate losing. We, the people of the Mets, celebrate the other team. High fives for everyone. Pete Alonso says, enjoy the sun. Oh, my God. Well, Frank, um, yeah, saying that two pitchers for the price of one is kind of what the Yankees did last year with Tyone and, um, and Kluber, and it's what the Mets did in 2019 where they let Wheeler walk and signed Walker and Porcello. Uh, did you hear? John Eichhoff. Opening day starter. Uh, Brad Ausmus says his dream is to have the same starter every day, and he's going to pick Eichhoff. I, 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 cough. <laughs> and the Mets are down seven nothing. Seven runs. Jared Eichhoff didn't retire a batter, and now here comes the starting kid, uh, the, 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 uh, the bulk guy. Corey Oswalt. Justin Junk. Well, the Mets' current rotation now is DeGrom, Carrasco, Walker, Peterson, McGill. <laughs> DeGrom is out for the season. No. Oh, they're going to break the Spiders record. 27 and 135. Oh, my God. And then we'll have uh, KFC also be going, Uncle Stevie! <laughs> Well, we're having an Uncle Stevie advocate on the show next week, so you'll have to hash that out with him. Remember what I told him? I would give any manager until May to Memorial Day, with one exception. And that exception is Brad Osmus. Yeah, and the Mets went ahead and hired Billy Epler, who has a decent enough track record, minus his... Well, experience and background, I should say, not his tenure with the Angels, but he was working under another meddling owner in Arte Moreno. But Epler is the one who hired Brad Osmus with the Angels, and then Moreno forced him to fire him after one losing season, and then that's when they brought in Madden. But Epler apparently wanted Buck Showalter instead of Madden, so that's also a possibility, I guess. 
Nope, it's going to be Brett Osmus. I hear a lot, I've been hearing a lot about Eric Chavez, too, because Epler and him are tight from his time with the Yankees. Eric Chavez? Is he coaching anywhere? No, he coached in the in AAA for the Angels. Um, Epler and Cashman brought him back as a special advisor when Epler was still with the Yankees as assistant GM. And then Epler brought Chavez with him as a special advisor. Uh, oh, so basically Angels. a guy that hasn't been involved in baseball in 20, in 15 years? Well, he interviewed for the Angels job in 2019, uh, before 2019, and when uh, Osmus got it. And he coached in AAA during that time, too, for the Angels. This offseason has been Hindenburg-like in disaster. I don't understand why no one's mentioning Mike Schilt's name. I mean, he's NL Manager of the Year candidate, and he's available. Because the Mets are stupid. So what do you think Billy Epler is going to do? He did sign Otani, and Japan's about to post another star outfielder. And he That's signed Trout to the extension, signed Rendon. They couldn't build a pitching staff. He wasn't allowed to build a farm system. He did build out their first analytics department in, with the Angels, and he has a vast scouting background. He was 10 years as scouting director for the Yankees and then three seasons as assistant GM, the right hand to Brian Cashman. He knows New York. He's got the scouting background, analytics. That's kind of what, all, what you want in a GM candidate. Do you know the twist, though, Frank? Guess who his best friend is? Mickey Calloway? <laughs> Close. David Stearns. And the Mets are still targeting David Stearns, as it turns out, as we learned last week. And whenever his contract's up, whether it's next year or the year after, they still want him to be president of baseball ops. In the meantime, Epler will be running baseball ops and making final decisions. So you kind of wonder whether he'd be okay with that, with bringing in a Stearns above him. But they do have a good relationship, so, you know, it might work if, if that is the route they potentially go. This is going to be a disastrous offseason. They're not going to sign Bryant. They're not going to sign Castellanos. They're not going to bring in Marte. They're not. They're going to lose Stroman. They're going to lose Conforto. They're going to do nothing to replace these guys. It's just been a total disaster. The Marte and thing it, kind of reminds me of Granderson when he was a free agent. The Mets gave him that fourth year, and he chose to come to the, sign with the Mets, and it wound up paying off. I think the same thing will be said with Marte, who's 33. That fourth year is going to be important. No, no, the Mets, the Mets, all the Mets ever do is they, they, they timidly tap, put their toe in the water, and they timidly put, put it out. We're still fucking dumpster diving. We're going to get, uh, we're going to get another, uh, uh, Albert Amora type of player. I mean, that, that, that's a Mets tradition now. There's, that's a Mets tradition. I've uh, kind Gary of, Matthews, Gary Matthews Jr., uh, Alejandro Diaz, Keon Broxton. I mean, how many junkie uh, Jake Morezik? How many junkie outfielders had the Mets brought in? The uh, Almora, it, 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 it literally is a yearly tradition. I put together a blueprint for the Mets, and all of it involves spending big in free agency. I, I do think they can make some smart trades, particularly with maybe the A's or the Reds who have players and they're trying to sell off. But You know they're not going to do it. They're not going to do a thing. They're, they're going to sell that the Robinson Cano coming back is the big acquisition. So I was saying that they should get Bryant and Baez to fix the lineup. But being a little more realistic now, maybe Baez, Marte, and maybe you bring in Kyle Seeger on a short-term cheap deal as a stopgap until Vientos and Beatty are ready to not block them at third. That's not going to happen. And they're gonna, and what they're going to do is they're going to make a, a short-sighted – Trade and they're going to trade Beatty and uh, and uh, the, the prospects and and, uh, and Mauricio and the guy they get is going to be uh, a bum who is going to be gone after a year and we're going to be glad he's gone after a year. Vientos looks like he could be a pretty good player, and he's the closest since he's at finished the AAA. But Beatty is really an exciting prospect who I guess he'll probably be up in 2023 unless they need him next year. But he tears the cover off the ball everywhere he goes. He's excited. Oh, no. What to do is to trade him for somebody who is just like a, a marginal type player. And then, and, then, 
and everyone will go, yay. Uh, KC will go, Uncle Stevie. <laughs> a big hope for the Mets, and, and you'll look back at last season where things kind of went off the rails. DeGrom got hurt. Lindor got hurt. DeGrom stays healthy. Lindor goes back to being a superstar, which he was in the so month of September. basically, they're crossing their fingers and hoping that Jacob DeGrom is healthy this year while doing nothing to actually make sure that it happens. Yeah, that sounds like a winning game plan. They, above anything else, need to bring in another top-end starter with a lot of upside. And uh, Yeah, I'm well, thinking- they, they, they've lost to they, they Syndergaard. Strowman's gone. Uh, Carrasco sucks. Taiwan Eikhoff, uh, he sucks. David Peterson sucks. Carrasco. I said Carrasco sucks. Oh, you did. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They call him. They, they call him Cookie, but he's that Danish Cookie, that dry, nasty Danish Cookie that comes in those stupid tin cans. You know the tin cans that you go to grandma's house and go, "Oh, look, cookies!" And then you see it's a sewing equipment. Then you actually taste the cookie, and you wish it was sewing equipment. Yeah, no, you mentioned that before. That's a pretty disgusting image. But Strowman's durable, and you know what you're getting with him, but he's probably going to draw 25 mil a season. Uh, I like Gosman, honestly. And, and maybe to get Gosman and Alex Wood would be a pretty, nope. good, uh, pretty good upgrades in the rotation. They won't do it. They need a lefty. They, yeah, well, they won't do it. Uh, Brad Austin says it doesn't matter how you throw the ball. He's just going to use a pit. He uses uh, an opener. Then he uses a bulk guy for 50 pitches, uh, even if he's uh, one out from a perfect game or one strike from a perfect game at 50 pitches, he comes out. And the next guy he comes up uh, is a different pitcher who puts balls on the tee and tries to get them to hit the ball out uh, the ball, ballpark. And of course they do. And then you lose the game. By the way, I missed this. Did you see the report that the Mets apparently went radio silent on Syndergaard after offering him the QO, and he didn't feel the love as part of the reason he left? Well, of course not, because they have nobody in the office. Sandy Audison yeah. is going on a uh, Sandy Audison is going, and uh, Billy Epler are not going to even be in New York. They're going on a uh, tour of the Antarctica while all the other free agents are signing. They well, don't even have their, we're, we're, more of the starting gonna, pitchers will probably be taken in the next week or so. Um, but lockout is pretty much imminent at this point. December 2nd, we might see a lockout until February. Yeah, which means if, if there's a lockout, the Mets will lose 115 games. Why is that? Because the Mets have no, no front office to put things together. When the signings freeze, they won't have a plan. Everyone else will have a plan. The Mets will be running around chasing their tail and uh, touring Antarctica. Oh Sandy uh, Epler will have to uh, get permission from Sandy. Sandy will say, uh, let me call uh, Jeff Wilpon. Jeff Wilpon will say no. And Andy Martino will say they did the smart thing. <laughs> and KFC will go, Uncle Stevie! <laughs> <laughs> By the way, another good starter who came off the board tonight, Verlander wound up taking one year, $25 million with a second-year option to go back to the Astros, spurning the Yankees who thought they were going to get him. And the Mets were never in on him because he was tied to the qualifying offer. The Mets are not willing to give up the number 14 pick to sign any of the qualifying offer guys. That means no Castellanos, no Robbie Ray, no Correa. But you know what they're going to do to number 14 pick? <laughs> Kumar Rocker. They're going to draft him again. They are going to lose 100 games a year. And Mr. Met is going to become Mr. Yankee. Oh, my God. And they're just going to have a, a spirit squad. Well, Frank, isn't losing good? Well, yeah, that's what they're going to have signs. They're they even getting rid of the apple in front of the stadium. They're going to put up a sign that says, smile, losing is fun. Oh, my God. Gary, Ronnie, and Keith are going to be replaced by Gary Thorne and uh, Anthony Recker. Okay. Even Terry Collins was on SNY last night saying how shocked he was that Syndergaard was leaving. There, this is, there's something 
wrong here. This is worse than Wilpon. This is worse than Wilpon. You think? Yes. Why do you think but, that? Uh, well, because we have an owner now who claims to be uh, a big guy, big spender, but he hasn't. He missed out. He lost Syndergaard. He missed out on Springer. He can't hire a president. People come running out of the organization, running out the door. Now he still has Sandy. He's gonna. Who he hired a GM who is who's already fucking sucked as a GM, who wants to bring in Brad Ausmus, who is the worst manager in baseball. Where is it? What's going right? They're not going to resign Bias. They're not going to resign Strowman. They're not going to do anything to replace them, but they'll trade top prospects and get C-level players, and it will all blow up in their face. Well, you know your I mean, favorite I mean, man... I mean, your favorite player, Khalil Lee, will probably be up with the big league team at some point next year. And, and Michael Conforto, I think there's just something fundamentally wrong with every department in the Mets. That all these players go to other teams and they're fixed like that. You know Conforto's going to go somewhere and be a superstar. Michael Conforto is going to bat 300 next year and hit 40 home runs. If he plays in Citizens Bank Park, you might be right. And and, and they're fixed like that. Look at the look at the year Ahmed Rosario had. Fixed like that. Sometimes they just need a different set of eyes. Stephen Matz had a good year with the Blue Jays too. Yeah. And 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 uh, and who are the Mets going to bring in? They're going to bring in. Jet, they're going to have Jared Eikhoff on the mound. <laughs> oh my God. The biggest concern, too, with the Mets is they lack pitching depth in their mono, their entire minor league system. It's barren with pitching depth, with no pitching depth, I should say, and outfielders. They have some good prospects who look like they might be stars in the big leagues, which is exciting. They might be up in the next couple of years, but they really don't have much else besides that. The farm system is barren. It, it, it really feels like it's still Will Pond, even worse. What's everyone going to say? What's KFC going to say, Frank? Uncle Stevie! We need to get rid of that mantra ASAP. Uncle Stevie, he can't do no wrong. Oh, Jacob DeGrom is gone. Well, he was getting old anyway. I like Jerron Junk, even though he's never won a game, and he, he's, he's extremely horrible. But, you know, it's fine. It's Uncle Stevie! What do you think about a sp- – hold on. B- uh, before that note, you know Steve Cohen favorited my a reply to my tweet of a fan saying that David Stearns doesn't want to come to New York or, like, what would make him want to come to New York? Uncle Stevie! And then he'll tweet – then he'll send out a tweet saying that, well, it's not your money, it's my money, and then, and I'm not going to – like he did with that Kumar Rocker. When that thing happened, I learned that he uh, – that's when I learned that he was a total fraud. That was the first fraud? No, it was about the third or fourth fraud. But that what was – What were the ones before that? Pervert Porter. Oh, true. Hugh Quattlebaum. That was Zach Scott's move, Hugh Quattlebaum. Yeah, well uh, – uh, I mean, Hugh Quattlebaum is just totally a total joke. They kept him in the organization. Yeah, because it's Uncle Stevie. And he'll be back as their hitting coach, too. They'll bring in a new guy and say, oh, Hugh, I like you. Rip it and rip it. Oh, and we're batting, four to, we're batting 220 again. And the fact that he had no time to get to know Stevie. Hugh Quattlebaum had no time to get acclimated with the big league lineup either. He did not know the hitters he was working with or their strengths or their weaknesses. It doesn't matter what your strengths are. 
Just try to hit it, Trudy. Oh, don't try to hit it the other way. I know everyone's, I know nine fielders are on that side. You want to try to hit it there or over them. So lift, lunch, and lunge. Frank, what do you think about the Mets going after Max Scherzer? Yeah, that won't happen. See, Boris said last week, he said it's, it's, a, it's not about geography with, a, with him. It's about winning. Uh, well, then, they, they, then that means the Mets are definitely out. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand how they'd be able to sell him a plan with no one in place. And I hear that, uh, uh, what you call Epper had to give uh, six weeks' notice, so he's not even going to be on the job, and there's going to still be nobody doing anything. There's no, but, but there's just, I mean, there's just a lack of urgency on the, the Mets. There's just never anything. It's, it's, the, 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 the Baez will be signing somewhere else. Strowman's going to be signing somewhere else. And the Mets are just going to be there going, Uncle Stevie! <laughs> well, his long-term vision is kind of starting to come to fruition, uh, at least getting the GM in and then potentially going after Stern still once he is available, that they're not looking at it from a short term of just trying to hire the wrong candidate. I mean, that would be a home run from an executive standpoint. Yeah, well, that's what the Mets ever did. It, 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 it's just like it, it's just like watching Michael Conforto hit. It's just continuing to flail away. And they're now they're big on analytics too. They built out their analytics department and uh, they've really expanded it. And it's, it's it's the people who have just like uh, total morons, you know. Beep pop boop pop boop <laughs> boop beep beep pop pop boop. They how to the game with a ball. And there's bases too. It doesn't matter who his help, uh, it only matters the quantitative error, error, error analysis. Analysis. We're not gonna try to hit the ball through a hole or anything. We're just gonna grip and rip, and heart don't matter. When is the frustration gonna end for you, Frank? I'm hearing rumors that uh, Strowman's going to the Angels with, uh, so it's going to be uh, two uh, two Mets on the Angels. They uh, have been interested in him. It's a total joke. Total joke. And uh, here the, uh, here's a prediction: uh, uh, the, the, the 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 Mets are going to get nobody, nobody. And they're not going to resign anybody. They're going to be left getting the scraps at the end of the table. So Thanksgiving. they're going to be getting Thanksgiving leftovers in the trash? Yep, dumpster diving. What move could the Mets make that will make you start believing again, Frank? I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't see them actually making any move that will make me believe. Even if they bring in Baez, Marte... Gosman, Loop, you still won't believe? I just don't see any way possible that they bring those players in. All right. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. Probably be growing frustration over the weeks as it has been already in this offseason. Um, I, I mean, I mean, this has been this offseason. What did I say at the beginning of the offseason? How bad it was going to be? And everything is falling into place. Besides Sandy Jr. Now, well, might as well be. So, Frank, uh, before we get to Ask the Tank this week, I just want to ask you real quick, what went on with your blocking in that football game? Vibs got, ru- Vibs got bum-rushed. And then that's what I've been everything. talking. Yeah, that's what I've been talking about. My tailbone. So take us through that leading up to the tailbone injury. What happened? Everything went black for you. All I know is I saw two, uh, two, uh, two balls uh, hitting me in the head, uh, just knocking me over. It was like, uh, 
that they that old uh, that, that, that 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 thing that's on the table, the metal balls that go click 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 click. Well, it knocked me the fuck over. And what's going on with your tailbone? It's feeling better now. I still feel it every now and then, but boy, that really just like locked me for a loop. Did you take any ibuprofen or anything? Ah, uh, a leave. A leave. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you're recovering, Frank. That was a dangerous fall you took. Oh, uh, did not feel good. I tell you that. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but on that note, let's roll into some massive tank before we run out of time. Rico Bosco fan wants to know if you won the Powerball lottery at three hundred million, what would your first purchases be, and would you retire from Barstool? I wouldn't retire from Barstool, but I definitely buy a mansion. Where next door to Dave in Miami? Uh, I'm not sure where I'd buy it, but I'd find one. Well, there you go. Uh, any other purchases or? Yeah, I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe uh, I'd uh, pay someone uh, five thousand dollars a week to be a uh, limo driver. Fair a enough. So for uh, hire um, Julio, Mike Francesca's driver. The next one we have is Midwest contenders ask the tank, "Who is your favorite musician?" Uh, I'm not really that big. I mean, I and I, I, I don't really have a favorite. You don't have I kind of like, up. you know, I kind of like Queen. I like a little country. I like a little heavy metal. Different things like that. It depends on the mood I'm in. Fair enough. And then uh, the next one we have is from Arcatino, who says, "When are you throwing a housewarming party, and am I invited?" Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do a housewarming party. I'm just still trying to get everything sorted. Maybe in between the holidays or afterwards? Uh, I'll see. But I have a rooftop lounge here that has a billiards table and a uh, fire pit. That's pretty cool, Frank. That's that's great for gatherings. Yes, it is. Sadly, a Mets and Dolphins fan wants to know who are your top five managers on your wish list for the Mets? Um, Bruce Bochy, Mike Sosha, uh, who else could be on there? Uh, John Gibbons, Ron Washington, and Carlos Beltran. No, Mike Schilt? Oh, Mike Schilt, yeah. I was thinking about the list I made before Mike Schmidt was fired. Bochi doesn't want to manage again, I don't think. And well, he's retired, of course, but I don't think Beltron wants to manage right now either from everything I've heard. Well, you know who it's going to be. It's, either going, to, it's going to be Brad Osmus. His bench coach is going to be uh, Hugh Quattlebaum. Uh, the dirt race coach is going to be a guy that says... Uh, that uh, basically said that uh, he's going to throw up the stop sign, except when the ball is uh, being thrown already. He's going to be the, he's going to be even worse than Gary DiCarcina. Is every time something happens in the Mets, it gets worse. Oh my God, it's like an infection. Frank, uh, the final one we have is from Furkan Kormaz fan. He says, "When will KFC stop saying Uncle Stevie?" And does re-signing Baez and Stroman make it a successful offseason, or will you need more to be done to satisfy you? Hold that note. Re-signing Stroman and Baez would just be bringing back the same players on an 85-loss team. So I don't see how they could just do that and call it an offseason, but Frank, take it away. Yes, they need more. But will that be a start for you if they bring those two back? It would be a start. All right. When's KFC going to stop saying Uncle Stevie? When they go 0 162. Uncle Stevie! <laughs> My God. Jacob well, Brown was traded. Uncle Stevie! 
God. Well, on that note, Frank, uh, you got a fan, you got a song picked out for this week? Uh, let me see. Uh, they, what can they pick for a song? Uh, it was easier when people pick songs. They don't really have one this week. But I, they should find one. I mean, who, what can I pick? Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. I really can't think of one right now. Damn. Can't think of well, for everyone listening, remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. Follow Frank at NJ. Yeah. You... Follow the podcast. Yeah. At the I, I needed a suggestion this week. I don't have one. Do you have a little jingle then to take us out? All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to think of one. You know what? I just found a song. Here we go. Bless everybody's ears. I just got to come up with lyrics. Let me see. Here we go, trying to find it. And it's not going to be the exact here. It's going to be my version of it. The Mets spin sucking in the stands. And the children are cheering, thinking that the new owner is good. Here we go. I'll tip my hat to D.V. Cohen, take a bow that we're still going to lose. Smile and grin at that nothing has changed. And I pick up my bat and I say, just like yesterday, we've been fooled again. <laughs> the change, it had to come, but nothing has actually changed. We knew it all along. Meet the old boss, same as the, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, because they fooled the fans again. There you go. Everybody, remember rate, like, download, like, review, subscribe. We'll see you next yeah. Tuesday. We're recording, and it'll be out Wednesday morning uh, for the Thanksgiving special. So get ready for that. <laughs>